Immersive technologies are shaping the future. But right now, these new realities are not built for everyone. Many users are being left out simply because XR experiences do not take their accessibility needs into account. So in this video, I will cover some accessibility features and challenges, as well as possible solutions for various disabilities like physical, visual and auditory impairments. If you don't know me yet, my name is Anna. I'm a UX designer at Immersive Insiders and I've been in both the UX and XR space for quite some time. At Immersive Insiders, we work closely with leading XR companies like Meta, as well as enterprise partners who are actively using XR in their workflows. All right, let's dive right in. According to the World Health Organization, more than 1 billion people worldwide have some form of disability. But accessible design enhances the lives of all users, not just those with a disability. Things like straightforward navigation, readable fonts and consistent formatting benefit everyone. Because, and I feel like UX designers are talking a lot about this, but for good reason, disabilities are not black and white. They can be situational, like a mother holding her newborn child in one of her arms. Or they can be temporary. You break your arm, for example, and then it'll be healed in six weeks. Or you can lose one of your arms permanently. So disability is a spectrum. All people benefit from addressing different accessibility needs. They can affect every single person and make all of our lives better. Accessibility can improve the usability, quality and performance of your products, as well as reach new markets, increase conversions and reduce costs. Consumers are also more likely to support and engage with brands prioritizing inclusivity. Okay, so what about the current state of accessibility in XR? Right now, most XR apps provide minimal to no customization options or accessibility features. The MetaQuest store has a comfort rating that divides apps into different categories like comfortable, moderate, intense, or unrated. But actually, few apps go beyond that to address different accessibility needs. Not every user can access and experience the same way as other people due to various limitations or disabilities. There's a lot of room for improvement and we don't have to exclude users with disabilities from fully enjoying XR experiences because the concepts that I will be talking about are not super new or not super far off from reality. One of the most effective ways to make XR more accessible is through multimodal inputs. They provide users with multiple ways to interact with the environment and in the best case the user can just choose the one that best suits their needs. Okay, so let's have a look at the different types of multimodal inputs that we currently have. The most common way to navigate in XR right now is through handheld controllers. Through hand tracking, users can use more natural gestures to interact with objects, for example, grabbing or pointing. And then we have eye tracking, which is especially helpful for hands-free interaction. And it's becoming more and more common, especially in advanced and upcoming XR devices. Also, users can control menus, perform activities, or communicate using voice commands. So imagine voice assistants like Siri or Alexa. Make me a huge sticky bomb. Then we have brain computer interfaces, which might still be a little bit futuristic, but I think it could revolutionize accessibility by allowing to control elements using our thoughts alone. Okay, now that we've covered the different types of multimodal inputs, how can we use them and who is actually benefiting from what? Let's start with visual impairments. One of the biggest challenges in XR is it to design for people with some kind of visibility loss because we heavily rely on visual cues. But 90% of people with visibility loss are not fully blind. Some people with a distorted vision or farsightedness might actually be able to see more clearly through a headset. So let me know in the comments below if this is the case for you or not. I would love to hear your thoughts. Alternative input methods that we can use here are, for example, text-to-speech narration, so users can still navigate menus and receive essential information that they would otherwise miss. Voice commands are another great option and allow users to trigger an action using their voice alone. 3D spatial audio is especially important here. It helps users to better navigate the environment and can provide cues for orientation and object interaction. Okay, so what about users who are fully blind? Nuanced haptic feedback in different intensities allows them to pinpoint things in their environment. What I discovered through a presentation by Aaron Gluck is that he developed a sonar-like system where a passive sonar rotates 360 degrees around the user in a straight line and then emits a sound and haptic feedback when it detects an object which to me sounds absolutely insane. Like it's so cool, it's such a great idea. This feature needs a proper training and onboarding period though. 
So definitely check out Aaron Gluck's presentation if you're interested in hearing more. I've linked it in the description below. Audio cues are critical for many interactions and missing out on those as a hard of hearing or a deaf person can make navigating the virtual world super, super difficult. So we can address that by providing captions for sounds, in-game events and dialogues. Here are some best practices. Captions should always have a background for better contrast. Opt for headlock captions that are fixed to the user's view. Avoid scrolling captions and rather use pop-in ones and use icons to identify the person speaking, music playing or sound effects. Also allow users to tweak the music and sound effects separately. This way they can lower or mute the background music while keeping important audio cues more prominent. For users with limited mobility, using traditional controllers or even hand tracking can be difficult. But there are solutions to make XR more accessible here as well. For example, apps like Beat Saber actually offer a one hand mode that lets you play the game with a single hand instead of both. You can also switch between using the left hand and right hand depending on your preference. There's also eye tracking where users can select items and navigate the virtual world using just their gaze. This is especially useful for those who might find it challenging to use hand gestures or controllers. Voice commands are another great option because they reduce the reliance on physical cues as well. For those who can use hand gestures but with limitations, Gesture recognition could be simplified to accommodate one-handed or easier to perform gestures. Lastly, haptics play an important role as well, so users can feel interactions even without fine motor control. Okay, so how can we make sure our designs are more inclusive? We could let our users access the app settings right at the start, so before any intro or tutorial begins, so they can adjust everything based on their needs and still have an awesome experience without missing out on anything. Which brings me to the second point, letting our users adjust visual, input and audio settings is super critical. Building in reminders for our users to check their real world surroundings, never forcing or encouraging them to walk backwards and offering to save their progress when they want to take a break is important as well. To protect our users from harassment and abuse in multi-user apps, we could provide options like muting them, blocking or reporting them. It is up to us as creators to ensure that our work reflects and represents the diversity of the world we live in. There is so much more that needs to be said about this topic, especially since I didn't touch on cognitive and neurological accessibility at all. So there will definitely be more videos in the future. Stay tuned. In the next video, I will be breaking down interaction concepts for XR. Getting interaction design wrong can ruin the whole experience. So I will be explaining the difference between learned and physical interactions as well as showcase direct, indirect and distant interactions. And don't forget to check the description for the link to the extra design challenge where you can apply all these concepts we've talked about today. That's it for now. Thank you so much for watching and we will see each other in the next one.